Hi there, oh, welcome to my views and news. Three news stories. Firstly, a key meeting near Takeze River. Meeting uh, involving stakeholders. Stakeholders to dispute about why Thumair Asagade and Salamti. Amhara officials were there too. Tegrai officials were there. E and E have details with this video. Secondly, uh, around 15 people have been buried who were found dead. Uh, they were shot dead in North Shore zone of the Amhara region. Civilians are foreign fighters. Thirdly, Ethiopia uh, strongly rejected uh, Somalia's claims about border violations. What did Ethiopia say in its formal statement through Foreign Ministry spokesperson? Let's start with first a story from uh, Tegarai Amhara border Takeze River. By the way, the Amhara group say that Takeze is the boundary between Tegarai and Amhara regions. And if Tegarai fighters cross Takeze, it's a violation. It's uh, an attack on Amhara territories. Tigray denies Tigray says that areas to the west of Takeze, Salamti, Humaira Volka, Sagaze are part of Tigray. For decades, they've been part of Tigray. We know that uh, developments are in progress about the return of IDPs uh, from Aksom, Shere, uh, Adyagrat. Makale, I told you yesterday that uh, the government has written a letter to private uh, transport uh, owners telling them to provide vehicles for the relocation of these IDPs to their home. And I said that maybe Salamthi would be the first uh, territory, a zone. Uh, towards which these IDPs could be seen moving in coming days. Meetings for the last uh, three days near Takeze River involving the stakeholders. Obviously, the issue, the topic of discussions is return of IDPs. Meetings have been held in Indabagna. I hope my pronunciation is correct. Indabagna is uh, along the main road which connects Salamthi with Tegarai uh, around uh, 30 kilometers away from the bridge. It is bridge over Takaze River. In Indabagna, Tadase Vare, the Tegarai military commander, attended these meetings. Senior Ethiopian National Defense Force officials were there too, secondly. Thirdly, Amhara regional government officials were there. Fourthly, the zonal North Gondar, South Gondar zonal government officials, prosperity party leaders were there too. Fifthly, some elders from Salamti were also called to attend these meetings and they came. Uh, IDPs were also brought. IDPs originally from Salamti. Uh, they're at camps, but some were invited for these talks and they held meeting with elders. So Tegarai wanted to prove the case that the people who are going to return to Salamti are regional residents of Salamti. That is why uh, Tadasa Varede uh, and the displaced people of Salamti, they held meeting with elders of Salamti in the presence of other stakeholders. We don't know what has been agreed. Uh, we have only been able to confirm these meetings. Tegarai here going slow. Good to see that. Because obviously, if Tegarai rushes, uh, it would have uh, consequences. Tegarai going slow, trying to take Salamthi elders on board, ENDF on board, Amhara government, North Gondar government on board, but making it clear that its people will return to Salamthi. But it wants the return to happen peacefully. It does not want any uh, violence. Let's see. We'll update you in coming videos. I think things happening fast. 
IDPs protesting. They protested in several cities of Tegarai uh, this week. They protested in uh, Sudan to refugees there. They want to return to their country. Uh, they're mainly from Western Tegarai, Western zone. Uh, but Tegarai is trying to avoid an armed escalation because in Raya, we know that things still a little volatile. Tegarai and END of their used force, they did not take the people on board before the entry of Tegarai fighters. Though Tegarai has managed to take large parts of Raya, but still there are issues. In Salamthi, Tegarai going slow because it's it could be more challenging than Raya, less challenging than uh, Omera Volkai Sagadip. Volkai, the flashpoint, which will uh, be topic of talks after Salamthi, I think. Secondly, viewers, North Shore zone of the Amhara region, where around 15 people have been killed this week. Buried, uh, there are funeral ceremonies held at uh, local churches being confirmed by local people. The people, uh, these uh, youths, they were mainly youths, they were killed in Thermabar. Thermabar is in North Shore zone of Amara region. Fano groups are operating close to Thermabar, the Bersina as well. Close to the Bresina. According to locals, these youths were shot because they were suspected of uh, supporting Pano, of being part of Pano. Pano backed sources are claiming that these are civilians who were shot dead by government forces. They had nothing to do with Pano groups. That is what Pano groups say whenever their people die, their fighters die, die they don't acknowledge their losses. They always say that civilians are being killed, military is killing civilians. Uh, difficult to say, but security forces say that those who were killed in Thermabar, they were members of armed groups, uh, Fano groups, and they've been involved in attacks on the military, on Prosperity Party members, on government officials. We've seen several assassinations in North Shore Zone, the Amhara region, since last year. Third viewers, Ethiopia strongly rejected Somalia's claims that Ethiopian military violated Somalia's territorial integrity and crossed illegally into Somalia. Last week, we saw that thousands of Ethiopian troops entered Somalia. Thousands are already operating in Somalia under bilateral arrangement with uh, bilateral arrangement between Ethiopian government and of federal member states of Somalia and under Atmos African Union Transition Mission in Somalia. A thousand entered more last week in Hiran, Hirshabale, and Dolo, Rajubbal, and Gaitu Zone. Uh, they said they had received information about uh, Al Shabaab organizing on Ethiopia Somalia border. They held discussions, then they returned reportedly. Uh, when UN Security Council met uh, last week to talk about the crisis in Somalia, Somalia's representative there leveled allegations against Ethiopia that Ethiopian forces were violating Somalia's borders, their dollar integrity and sovereignty, and they were crossing into Somalia illegally and conducting operations in Somalia illegally. Ethiopian a ministry spokesperson formally responded to these allegations 24 hours later. Ethiopia says that uh, its forces never illegally crossed into Somalia. The activity of Ethiopian military on border is a routine exercise. It was a joint military training. It wasn't any operation and it has been happening for years. Uh, Somalia's uh, officials are igniting a conflict. Ethiopia is not violating Somalia's territorial. This is what Ethiopian official put in. Uh, problem is that there is no Somalia's uh, border security force. Open borders, porous borders. Not porous, but open borders. Ethiopia has large-scale deployment of its military on Somalia's border. Its forces can enter Somalia. Whenever they want to. 
Somalia will have to raise a strong military to protect its borders. Otherwise, anyone can violate its uh, borders in Somalia. Won't be able to do anything. It will just issue statements. Uh, otherwise, it won't, be in a, in a, it, it won't be in a position to stop these incursions. And in some cases, the Somalia's federal member states, they support anti of Ethiopian troops. They oppose the withdrawal of Ethiopian troops southwest in Jubaland in the statements uh, a few weeks ago. They rejected the federal government of Somalia's position that all Ethiopian troops should leave uh, Somalia. Uh, they, they said no, Ethiopian troops have been very helpful. They have helped the regional uh, governments a lot against Al Shabaab. So, uh, Somalia needs to do a lot to protect its borders. Thank you for watching.